Now we're going to start talking about the chain rule, otherwise known as what to do with composite functions. If I've given you a function such as f of x equals 3x plus 2 all squared, and I asked you to find df dx, the only way we know how to do this at this point is to go ahead and multiply out that binomial. Once I multiply out the binomial, then I can use the sum rule and take the individual derivatives. However, if I change this to 3x plus 2 all to the 12th power, I don't really want to multiply that all out. So I think we're going to have to come up with a better way of handling composite functions. Let's say I want to find dy dx, that is how fast y changes with respect to x. Well, let's say I had an intermediate variable here. Let's say I knew how fast y changed with respect to u. And then I know how fast u changes with respect to x. If I multiply those two together, that gives me one form of the chain rule. I can also write the chain rule in terms of composite functions. I'm going to let y be a function of u and u be a function of x. Now if I want to talk about dy dx, it's simply the derivative of f of g of x, which I can now write as this. The trouble is I don't want u in here. I want this all in terms of x, so I'm going to rewrite it as such. That is, the derivative with respect to x of f of g of x times the derivative with respect to x of g of x. I could also write this in prime notation as such. And these are the two different forms of the chain rule that we'll use. The key to this is remembering that there is an outside function and then an inside function. If I look at my f of x that I started with, let me rewrite that. f of x equals 3x plus 2 all squared. My outside function that looks like my something squared. And in this case, I'm going to say f of u is simply equal to u squared. And what's that u? Well, that u is my g of x, which is just 3x plus 2. So if I go ahead and use this in my second version of the chain rule, I can write that the derivative with respect to x of f of x is equal to the derivative of f with g of x plugged in times g prime of x. g prime of x is simply equal to 3, and f prime of u is just 2u. So that means by the chain rule, my first bit will be f prime, which is 2 times whatever u is. And in this case, u is my original g of x which is 3x plus 2, times my g prime of x, which is 3. So let me go ahead and multiply this out. I get 6x plus 4, all times 3, or 18x plus 12. If I go back and check, I see that exactly matches what I got by multiplying that out. I'm going to do a couple more examples of the chain rule in this form. I'm going to stop writing out what my f of u and g of x are because I think that can sometimes make things more confusing. So let's do four more examples. My first example is similar to what I just did. If I take the derivative of this with respect to x, I'm going to first take the derivative of the outside function. That is something raised to the 10th power. If I take the derivative of something raised to the 10th power, that's 10 times that something raised to the ninth power, that is 10 minus 1. So what was the something? The something was the 6x cubed plus 3x plus 1. That takes care of the f prime with g of x plugged in. Now I need to multiply this by my g prime of x, my derivative of g of x, that is that inside term. That's simply equal to 18x squared plus 3. I could go ahead and factor this. I could pull out an extra 3 out of this factor right here, but quite honestly, I'm not going to. And I don't want you to get in the habit of trying to simplify things, especially when it comes to the gateway exam. Leave things in unsimplified form. What we're looking for is can you take these derivatives? I'm not quite as concerned at this point of whether or not you can simplify. Let's do another example. The derivative of the square root of 5x squared plus 1. The first thing I'm going to do is rewrite that square root in exponent form. Once I do that, I can go ahead and take the derivative of the outside function, that is the square root, that's 1 half times whatever it was square rooting, and then it's negative 1 half. Well, whatever it was square rooting, that was the 5x squared plus 1. Now I'm going to multiply this whole thing by the derivative of that inside bit, 
which would be just 10 times x. If you wanted to simplify this, you could. This would become 5x divided by the square root of 5x squared plus 1. Now, if the problem says not to leave anything in terms of a negative exponent, then you do have to rewrite that negative 1 half as 1 over something to the 1 half power. So simplification isn't necessary, but if you're asked to not leave any negative exponents, you do have to rewrite it as a positive exponent in the denominator. Here's a more complicated example. Okay, I've got a messier thing in the parentheses, but again, just to start, I'm going to take the derivative of something messy to the third power. That's simply three times that something messy to the three minus one or two power. Now let's go ahead and write in what is that slightly messy bit. That slightly messy bit, once I have to take that derivative, I'm gonna to have to use the quotient rule. So let's go ahead and do that. Quotient rule takes the derivative of the numerator, multiplies it by the denominator, and then from that I'm going to subtract my numerator times the derivative of my denominator. And finally, that will all be over the denominator squared. And believe it or not, that's how I want you to leave the answer. I can simplify this, but if I'm trying to assess if you can do derivatives, I'm looking for this step. Being able to simplify it, that's great in some circumstances, but for this kind of assessment, I just want to see if you can take the derivative. One more example, the derivative of e to the negative 3x. This one's not as clear, so I'm actually going to write out my f of u is simply e to the u. And what my u is equal to, and again I'm calling that my gx, is negative 3x. So the derivative of this is just the derivative of e to the u, which is just e to the u. e to the u, again u was whatever was inside that, in this case it's the negative 3x, and now I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of negative 3x, which is simply negative 3. So this final answer is negative 3 e to the negative 3x. For all of these, I've used the second form of the chain rule. Quite honestly, I find that much easier to use than the first version. But I'm going to give you an example or two of that, just so you can see both ways. So in this case, my outside function is going to be u to the 3 halves. My inside function is going to be 5x plus 4. So based by this rule, if I take that y and I find dy du, that's going to be equal to 3 halves u to the 1 half. And du dx, that looks like it's equal to 5. So that means dy dx, which is equal to dy du, times du dx, that's simply equal to 3 halves u to the 1 half times 5. But I can't leave it in terms of u. I have to now go ahead and rewrite that as 5x plus 4. Again, I'm not simplifying it, and that's fine. And I can leave it as 1 half instead of rewriting it as a square root. I would get the same answer if I used the previous method. I'm going to do two more examples like this. Pick the one that makes the most sense for you. So in this case, I have sine to the third power times x. y is equal to something to the third power. And that something is simply equal to sine x. dy du is 3u squared. du dx is equal to cosine x. And then my dy dx is simply 3u squared times cosine x or 3 times sine squared x, cosine x. One more example that looks really similar but isn't, and that's sine of x cubed. In this case, my outside function is actually the sine u, and my u is equal to x cubed. Now if I take my y and my u, and I find dy du, that's equal to cosine u, and when I find du dx, that's equal to 3x squared. So in this case, my derivative is simply cosine u times 3x squared, or cosine of x cubed times 3x squared. I could ask a question in a different way. I could give you a table of values for f prime, g, and g prime. And I could say, what's the derivative of h prime of two? If I know that h is f of g of x, 
then I can rewrite this as f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So let's find out what happens when I'm looking at the value 2. The first thing I'm going to do is attack this g prime term. I'm going to rewrite these as 2 plugged in so it's easier to see where this comes from. g prime of 2 is equal to 4. Then I have f prime of g of 2. g of 2, that's equal to 1. So now I have f prime at 1 times the number 4. So f prime at 1, that's equal to 5. 5 times 4, that's simply equal to 20. I think this really helps you keep track of what you're plugging to the f prime and what you're plugging into the g prime terms. I'm going to write out this general chain rule if I'm talking about a power. That is, if I have a function g of x raised to a certain power, that's equal to p times that g of x to the p minus 1 power times g prime of x. Quite honestly, I don't like having multiple formulas to memorize, and this is simply part of what we've been doing before. We've done problems like this, where I have something raised to a power. If you like memorizing things, go for it. But I think once you do enough of these, you'll just start recognizing that this is what you end up doing. So I wouldn't really memorize this per se. Where it gets a little bit more interesting, and you never like it when a professor says something gets more interesting because that usually means more difficult. Let's have something like the derivative with respect to x of sine of e to the cosine x. We have a function within a function within a function in this case. So what I'm going to do first of all is my chain rule. So my outside function is sine x. I'm going to la label this outer and this inner. So the derivative of sine x is cosine x but we don't have x, what we have in there is e to the cosine x. Now what we have to do is multiply this by the derivative of the inner. And I'm just going to explicitly write it like this for now. Again, it was by the chain rule. But I'm going to have to use the chain rule again in order to find out the derivative of that inside part. So my outside function is e to the stuff. The derivative of e to the stuff is just e to the stuff. Now I need to multiply that by the derivative of the stuff, and the derivative of the stuff is negative sine x. The derivative of cosine, remember, is negative sine. And again, that is my final answer. I'm not going to bother with simplifying that. Let's do one more example. The derivative of x squared times the square root of x squared plus 1. The first thing I always do is rewrite my square roots in exponential form. So now I've got the derivative of something times something. So the first thing I'm going to need is the product rule. You don't need to write out what rules you're using. I am, so you can follow what I am doing. So the product rule says I'm going to take the derivative of the, of the first product, 2x in this case, and then multiply it by the second product, plus the first product times the derivative of the second. So this is fine, except now I need to use the chain rule. So the derivative of x squared plus 1 to the 1 half power, that's equal to 1 half times the inside. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. And again, I'm fine with it in this form unless we ask for no negative exponents, in which case I would have to rewrite it as such. I could simplify it more, but I'm not going to. And that is the chain rule.